Hey guys, it's me, Nice, and I'm back, and I know you miss me, and thanks for the fan mail, but you don't have to cry no more, your mom is here, I'm kidding, welcome to Hello Nice, hi, I'm Nice, hello. Okay guys, so today basically I'm going to be interviewing an artist named Alyssa and she's going to tell us about her practice, her work, her subject matter and the biggest thing ever, aesthetics. Um, I'm Alyssa. And this is my studio, and yeah, I'm really sad. I'm moving out in about a week. I'm done with my degree, and yeah, I'm basically unemployed now. Or I don't know, do I call myself a working artist? I don't know, girl. Um, yeah, okay, I'm a working artist now. That's what I call myself. <laughs> um, so I make wallpaper. Okay, first of all, I do installation, right? Installation is like recreating space or just using, putting stuff together that is not flat on the wall or, you know, it's like creating a, a space or an environment that people come into and experience. It's, it's an experience, I guess. So I make wallpaper using um, elements found in predominantly my grandmother's home, I guess. Um, I also have my bitch here, so just hold get her. her. This is my bitch. Oof. <laughs> She's a judgy bitch. I love her. Yeah, look at her eyebrows. So cute. Yeah. She has like those pick and pay um, black <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> So yeah, this is her. I use her in literally most of my works. See, there's like a young portrait of her over here. Um, yeah, so she doesn't have her name. She's my bitch. That's her name. That's it. Um, yeah, so my grandmother gave gave it to me, and yeah, I really love her. Like she's literally like an embodiment of my grandmother. Like I love my grandmother. I love my bitch. And I feel like my grandmother's watching me through these little judgy eyes, eyes, which are literally accurate judgy <laughs> eyes. Um, my grandmother gave, gave it to me, and yeah, I really love her. Like, she's literally like an embodiment of my grandmother. Like, I love my grandmother. I love my bitch. Oh, hey guys, you're back. Okay, um, so on to the next question. Um, what do you feel about being a woman in like the art world? And what are some of the challenges you face? Do you like the art world? Um, do you feel like the art world is accommodating to like a colored um, person of color, black female artist? And like, what is the industry like right now? Ooh, okay. Um, I think um, so far I am literally just seeing what the industry is like. Like I literally finished varsity and I'm like getting a peak. And yeah, like it's a bit weird. Like it's kind of like how do I place myself in the space? How do I push my work out there? They like, um, the art world likes um, a certain language. Like they want you to use a certain language speak about your work, to talk about, <coughs> yeah, and like, <coughs> you have to just be like academically sound, like you have to just sound, you know, right, English. yeah, and I'm not like that, so it's kind of weird, like, when they ask me to, to write, and I'm like, well, the way they expect me to write, and the way that I write, two completely different things, so, and it's also, I don't think that there's all, I don't think that there's always, thank you, I don't think there's always um, perfect English words and perfect art world jargon for
for like our aesthetics and where we come from and what influences like black aesthetics, colored aesthetics, just like middle class South African aesthetics or whatever you're focusing on. Sometimes I feel like it's very hard to box it into like a European way of looking at art. And I feel like obviously sometimes the art world does borrow a lot of like European art world or like Western culture to look and like um, place art, you know, in this industry. Yeah, that's very true, and it's it's a problem. But I think it's slowly changing, especially mm -hmm. in Johannesburg. The like black artists are yeah they're on top, and I'm loving it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what I try to do is like. I create through the lived experience, you know, and I think that's something that's very important. Like, you know, knowledge does not only come from books, does not only come from the internet or, you know, from reading. It literally comes from your lived, your lived everyday experience, and that's what I try to do here. I'm showing people that what a lot of people's lived experience in this country is, and trying to create an experience like for. A lot of us young people like a nostalgic experience. So you mm. come in here and you experience nostalgia, like, oh shit, my grandmother had that, or like, oh shit, like, I remember this from here, and like, oh my gosh, my grandmother still has that, and like, that's what I like. Just come in, experience, you know, and if you fuck with that, then you fuck with that. If the art world fucks with that, then they fuck with that. If they don't, you know, mm. just leave something. And I just want to speak about like the like almost the crossover between what you do as installation and set design and just extending like art which is like wallpaper which is obviously 2d flat but the things that you've taken are 3d and you flatten them but then you also bring the space to life by making it 3d again so i really really appreciate that about your work and i think that that's really one of the things that have drawn me to you as an artist just the fact that your work is Three di that three dimensional and it's constantly bringing out the vibrance and like the tangibility of like the subject matter. Uh, I think I answered my own question, but I want you to speak back to just the way your work is so three dimensional and it literally jumps out from the walls. You know, I feel like it jumps out. Yeah, and it still somehow like speaks to the aesthetic. I mean, they don't have wallpaper with this stuff, but it's still so true to what you find in these homes, you know, in our homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I made wallpaper once and then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this again. So then I designed these and yeah, I mean, I wanted to no. basically, because um, I can't really sell what I do. So I can't sell these objects because they come from my grandmother. I'm not going to sell them. Like, mm. I'm trying to have this shit forever. So through doing wallpaper, I can like put elements of this in flat, and then that can be distributed, or that can be so, sold, or that can be put out there. Whereas this, I can keep and yeah. So depending on what I do, depending on the installation, this will be the only element, or the dog will be the only element, or a video, or something like that. I love it. I really, really, really love it. And do you feel like there's a way to further push the aesthetics? Um, does that make sense to you? Like, do you think that there's going to be, so this is like one generation, so what do you think the, the aesthetics of the future are, you know? Do you think that these aesthetics will be pushed into the future? Do you think they stopped and now that's why you can actually record them and archive them? Is it like a matter of archiving or is it a matter of like further pushing this into a future aesthetic or maybe finding this as something that will influence a future aesthetic? Um, okay, I like what you said last about this influencing a future aesthetic because it's happening now basically. Like, this is a current aesthetic but not in like the same way. So in my grandmother's home, this is still an aesthetic, you know. But that's that generation. My mother is this. This is not my mother's aesthetic, and now I'm bringing that aesthetic back. But through kitsch, like they call it in this world, this fine art world. Um, I think that the future generations will bring it back, but only certain people. Like I think the aesthetic now for homes is very, you know, modern, white, and. I hate that shit. I'm just like color, 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 color patterns. But yeah, I think it just depends on the person. I think like a lot of people are using this aesthetic now. Like I saw there was an an album cover where they use like kitchen table set. Mm. Um, 
So there are people who will still use it, but I don't think in the same way. I think people will use it as an archive or as a way to, or as an inspiration. Mm. I'm going to teach Alyssa a really cool song. Um, I hope you're ready. Let's go. Okay. So I say ah, and then you like basically go on. So we're going to make a song, and hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a song on the show. So I'm going to start with my beat, and then you're going to start with your random beat, and then we're going to keep like going. I'm going to change it up, and you're going to change it up. And yes. Okay. So I'm going to start with ah. Which one she likes. So yeah. Um, okay. Cook sisters or Cook Sisters or Omar Rusks. Girl. Definitely Cook Sisters. True. Okay. Joko or Five Roses? Ew, I think I'll go with Five Roses. Okay. I like Joko. You like Joko? Yeah. Okay. I feel like it has that thing. My roses sometimes like really strong. I like strong. Yeah. You are weak. Maybe you are weak. <laughs> okay. Um, Oras or Halls concentrates. <laughs> I think I'll go with Oras. It's a classic. Yeah, okay. Oras is a classic. I mean, you know. Trick question! Yeah. Trick question. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much for coming and listening. We really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you for being our first guest ever on Hello Nice Takes the Art World. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out a name. Um, ah, thanks for coming. See you next time. Um, maybe one day I'll respond to everybody's fan mail. Yeah.